everyone and welcome to Nursing Theory. I'm Mimi Jinko and today we're going to be talking about introductions or how in the earth does nursing theory relate to my practice. So a little bit about why this class matters. We are repackaging what we already know about nursing in new and broader ways. So we're entering into a field of inquiry looking at deeper patterns and, and relationships. We're also participating in a larger endeavor in terms of nursing theory and delving into some of the theorists that really shaped this profession. We're going to be learning a larger body of knowledge and putting that body of knowledge together in new and different ways. So what can you expect from me? I promise that I will inspire, support, and encourage you. I will challenge you to stretch and grow. If you get an assignment that is full of red ink for me, please do not be discouraged or dismayed because that is my way of trying to invest in you and help you become a better scholar and a more um, diverse nurse with deeper thinking patterns of behavior. Now what can I expect from you? Well, as the professor in the college, we are all accountable to SACS, which is the Southeastern Board of Accreditation and NLN. The homework expectations for the BSN class is one hour outside of every hour of class time. Now remember this is a three credit class, but it's condensed or crushed into an eight week fast track. So there will be a lot of reading and a lot of class time invested in assignments, but that is not inconsistent with a three credit class. It's just condensed so it feels more impactful. Now what does nursing theory actually do for a nurse? Well, a theory has the potential of improving practice. It strengthens the focus of care and provides consistency to nursing communication and activities. It has the capacity to improve health and quality of life for persons, families, and communities. So do you think at this point that theory has absolutely nothing to do with everyday practice? Well, I'm hoping that at the end of the term, you will think that theory has everything to do with everyday practice because theory must be brought into practice to make it practice richer and more meaningful. So I'm going to give you four examples of publications that I um, wrote that are on your PAL page that use theory in practice. The first one related to um, an article I wrote about transcultural nursing assessment. And I based it on the Geiger and David Heiser model developed in 1988. These uh, faculty, Dr. Geiger and Dr. David Heiser, actually created this model in response to nursing students in an undergraduate program who were struggling with culturally diverse patients and wanted to assess and provide care but didn't really have a vehicle or a model to do so. So I became intrigued with cultural care when I had a patient who was under my care and I got very task oriented. Actually the intro example is me in this. Um, I'm the nurse in this example. And I got very task oriented and totally negated the culture that was uh, expressed in this patient's care. And 
nearly undid three or four hard days of work with this um, Hispanic family. So I became intrigued with cultural care model and looked at um, various resources but couldn't find anything that applied it to the world of hospice and palliative care where I was working at the time. So I wrote the article. Um, Susan Moffat and I wrote this together and um, it was published in the Journal of Hospice and Palliative Nursing. The second kind of interesting article that I wrote was based on the theories of Robert Butler who is a renowned psychiatrist. He's deceased now but he was the founding director of the um, National Institute of Aging at the NIH or National Institute of Health and really brought geriatric medicine to the forefront, really made it a viable, unique specialty. He pioneered the use of life review and this dovetailed with Eric Erickson, another famous theologian. Um, he was a developmental psychologist, first child psychoanalyst in Boston, and he developed the stages of uh, social development that we're all familiar with. And the last stage of development is ego integrity versus ego despair. So I looked at how these two theories kind of dovetailed, how in the hospice and palliative setting it didn't matter if you were 20 or 40 or 80, if you were facing the end of your life, you were in that phase of life, ego integrity versus ego despair. And that whole sense of life review, of, of rec systematically recalling the past and making sense of your life was very applicable to the hospice and palliative care uh, population. And again, I could not find anything in the literature that related to this, so this was a gap. And so I got this article published about life reviews use in the hospice and palliative care setting. So taking it another step further, I looked at, uh, became intrigued with John Bowlby's attachment theory. Dr. Bowlby was a British psychoanalyst. He served in the Royal uh, Army, um, Britain's Royal Army during World War II, and was actually consulted by the World Health Organization regarding this massive and very significant issue of mental health of homeless children in Europe. Remember there was in Europe a great deal of destruction due to the war, lots of cities were just decimated, parents were killed, a lot of the parents sent children to the countryside for safekeeping and then they were um, orphaned and essentially homeless. So this is a big problem in uh, European culture that Dr. Bowlby addressed. And he basically looked at the whole idea of attachment theory and how that related to loss. So again I became intrigued with loss and bereavement and how that applied in the clinical setting especially related to staff. So this was an article that several chaplains from Lakeland Regional Medical Center and I published. Uh, it was a describing a grief support workshop that we designed and implemented related to loss and grief of staff. And so again this is theory based and um, definitely underpinned the whole um, workshop. So how do we learn about theory? How do we know about theory? And, and how do we embed that relationship into guiding our practice? Well there are a couple of ways that we can know 
Empirical knowing is book learning, essentially. The things that you read and study and test and, and know from didactic material. And you're going to get plenty of that with reading your book and um, answering the discussion board. Personal knowing is the, the relationship with a theory that is very personal. So a couple of discussion board items I'm going to ask you to be reflective in your posts and uh, discuss actual patient experiences and how that relates to theory. Ethical knowing is when a theory challenges what you ethically believe is right or wrong and that way you can integrate those two and um, become more aware of what you personally believe in your ethical practice. And aesthetic knowing has relates to do with the arts and humanities and how we appreciate the beauty and the um, simplicity maybe of a certain item. So I'm going to ask you to know theory by through aesthetics by drawing your interpretation of the nursing meta paradigm into an artistic expression. So hopefully all of these ways will help you learn more about nursing theory and how you can infuse that into your practice. I am looking forward to a very dynamic term with you. I love this class and I hope that you appreciate it as much as I do. Thank you and you all have a great night.